So, uh, benvenuti sul mio balcone. Uh, again, apologies to my friends who speak decent Italian, who understand how to pronounce the words right, but uh, hey, I'm doing my best. Uh, this is Dave. I'm coming to you today once again from uh, my balcony in the beautiful city of Bologna. Let me just spin the camera around for a second and show you what uh, I'm seeing. bad balcony to have in a beautiful city. Uh, okay, camera, stay where you're supposed to. Perfect. Well, today's uh, topic is going to be, as I mentioned in the last uh, in the last uh, video, is going to be about um, the magical beverage that Italians drink, which uh, which they call caffè. And uh, coffee in Italy is, for the most part, uh, very different from what most Americans are used to drinking, and those who come to uh, to Italy and to Bologna in particular uh, sometimes are a little surprised by what they encounter at the coffee shops. And so, uh, so this um, this video is going to be about tips on uh, on coffee in general in Italy, uh, how to order coffee, and um, and how to drink it, and how to pay for it, and what to have with it, and when to drink it, and all those sorts of things. Um, so. First of all, um, coffee in Italy is uh, cafe is um, not the not the weak, watery brown beverage that <laughs> most Americans consume in uh, in, in the states. Uh, it's uh, it's it's different, and uh, instead, it's a it's a really what I would actually define as a tiny cup of magic. Uh, it's it's very tiny, little tiny shots. It's what uh, uh, many Americans would call an espresso, is what you call a cafe um, in uh, in Italy. Um, and while there are um, certainly artisanal coffee roasters in Italy, uh, for the most part, the coffee, uh, whether you get it uh, in a bag in the store, pre-ground for you, or you go to a coffee shop, a coffee bar where it's ground prior, immediately prior to uh, to uh, pulling your shot. Um, is pretty much the same. It's a very dark and uh, uh, very delicious and very flavorful, but not a bitter beverage. It's uh, it's uh, just a delicious, magical beverage, and it's one that's consumed by Italians in massive quantities. Um, if you have a kitchen in Italy um, and uh, you um, you uh, have the ability to make your own coffee, you probably have one of these. Uh, and this is called a mocha pot, and they come in different sizes and shapes. Uh, this is kind of a knockoff of a of a um, relatively fancy one. This is probably from the market. It was probably a five or six euro purchase. This is actually a two cup. Uh, you know, there's my hand, and I don't have large hands. Uh, this is a two cup uh, model, um, and. Uh, in Italy, uh, coffee cups are tiny things. They're they're not big things. Uh, this is an example of what you find in the stores. This is uh, just a, almost a brand new bag I opened yesterday of uh, of La Vaza Rosa. Uh, a nice bag of coffee. It probably cost about two and a half euros. Not a not an expensive thing. Um, Every Italian household has a mocha pot, I pretty much guarantee you. Uh, and, uh, and the coffee that you make in a mocha pot is, pr is pretty good. It's pretty delicious. And, uh, you know, on those mornings, like this morning, for example, I'm busy. I was trying to put together this, uh, the, um, the notes for this video, and uh, uh, I didn't go out for coffee. So even though there's a coffee shop that makes delicious coffee directly across the street from my apartment, uh, I didn't... Um, I didn't wander downstairs this morning, uh, down the uh, four flights of stairs to have the coffee this morning because I wanted to uh, do some work and I have, I'm getting ready to leave town for a few days, so I wanted to um, kind of get prepared for that too. Um, so um, the coffee experience, the real coffee experience in Bologna, uh, my favorite city in Italy so far, and, uh, and in Italy in general, is to have a cup of coffee in a bar. And bars in Italy are different. Uh, there are bars on every block of every of this city. I mean, it's it's hard to walk, you know, um, 100 meters and not run into another another coffee bar. They're everywhere. And uh, they, um, 
They're different than bars in the States, of course, because in the morning they open up and they serve espresso and they serve uh, coffee all day long uh, and into the evening. But in the afternoons, they also start selling other beverages, some of them alcoholic. So uh, the bars, some of the coffee bars uh, have extensive liquor collections. Some of them have beer taps. Many of them have beer taps uh, or at least have a cooler with some uh, with some beers in it. Uh, oftentimes you can order a cocktail at a coffee bar. Uh, a spritz or something else um, in the evenings and the afternoons and uh, so some of them are more elaborate than others but uh, but in general I want to say that each coffee bar has its own personality and my favorite coffee bar uh, here in Bologna is sadly um, quite a ways from where I'm living right now it's close to a place I used to live on a previous uh, time I spent in here in Bologna and uh, it's run by two amazing brothers who are very kind and uh, actually I think the second day I was here on this trip I went to see them to bring them a bottle of Bill Wharton's hot sauce <laughs> because they are from the uh, the south of Italy. Boy the sun is bad. Let me see if I can move this around just a little bit and maybe have, there we go, a little bit more in the shadows. Um, and uh, I wanted to bring them something, uh, something from home because they've been so kind to me in the past. And uh, they're from the south of Italy, which, like the south of the uh, United States, is a place where people like things a little bit more on the spicy side. So uh, I think it was appreciated. It's, uh, you know, you never know when you give someone a gift, <laughs> whether, they, whether they think it's weird or nice or whatever. But they were kind to me, and uh, it was good to see them. But sadly, it's not my daily coffee shop this time because I live on the other side of the town and it's a, it's a long bike ride or an even longer walk to go uh, to go pick up a uh, cup of coffee in the morning. But each, uh, each bar, uh, coffee bar, has its own personality and in general uh, there is a bar, there's a, uh, a counter when you go into the coffee bar. And you go up to the coffee bar, to the counter, and tell the bar woman or the bar man that you, what you want. And uh, for example, a cafe, un cafe, per favore because it's good to be polite, right? And uh, they will pull you one, uh, serve it in a little tiny cup with a tiny spoon sitting next to it, and they will also serve you a, a little uh, tiny glass of water with that, uh, with that cup of coffee. And the water is to wash out your mouth, to uh, kind of clean the, the, the palate so that when you taste the coffee, you're having the perfect experience. And it's, uh, it's important. So the water uh, here for me, I, I particularly like sparkling water, what's called aqua frusante in this, uh, in this, uh, in this country, or uh, aqua con gasata, aqua gasata. Um, and um, you know, it's available everywhere. And in some bars, it's just what they serve. In other bars, they serve uh, still water, what they call naturale. Uh, it just depends. In some bars, they ask you what you want. What kind of water do you want? So it's a, you know, it's a custom experience. Also, when you order a coffee, it's not like you take a number and wait for the barista to uh, to call your name out. You know, uh, five minutes later. No, there's um, usually a person who's in a in a busy bar. There's at least one person working the coffee machine, and uh, she or he will be pulling coffees uh, as soon as they're ordered and the wait is only just a couple minutes and uh, you have your coffee served to you at the coffee bar uh, and you, uh, you drink your coffee and uh, set the cup down and go pay for your coffee and off you go. It's not a long thing to have a normal coffee, a normal cafe in a, in a coffee bar in Italy and people do it uh, all day long and all night long too. I, I was out last night uh, having dinner about uh, about nine o'clock with a friend, and uh, we. Uh, I was. I'm always shocked to see people uh, having a cup of coffee at, at you know nine or ten o'clock at night. Uh, but you know this is a city of many students, and a lot of people have to stay up late to uh, to study and get ready for the following day, and or they want to stay up to party because <laughs> there's a lot of partying that goes on in this city. So uh, you know it's a uh, it's a um, it's a different thing. Now, cafe, cafe in Italy is not an expensive beverage. It's not, even though it's uh, some of the best coffee you'll ever have, it's not expensive. A typical uh, 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 coffee bar will charge you maybe a euro and 10, 20, or maybe even 30 cents for a, a cup of coffee. Um, and um, it's, um, it's very reasonable. Uh, and, but 
getting a cup of coffee is just the beginning because there are many, many, many types of coffee. If you thought going into a Starbucks was confusing, uh, come to Italy and find out what the real coffee culture is like. Now, for example, um, one variation of a normal cafe would be to have a uh, cafe lungo. And a cafe lungo is a uh, coffee where the the barista or the bar woman or the barman actually uh, pulls the coffee and actually these machines are all computerized now so they just punch it, punch it, punch and and, um, and it um, in most places anyway and, the, and it pulls the coffee for you. Uh, they um, the, the, the coffee is pulled just a little bit longer so you have a little bit more uh, more liquid in your cup and it's not quite as strong as a uh, as a regular cafe. There's also, also uh, a cafe ristretto and a ristretto is, and again sorry for the pronunciation, uh, is a uh, coffee where the pull is not quite as long as normal so the coffee is more concentrated and more flavorful and there's a little bit less in the cup. Um, it's, uh, if you like, um, if you, um, if you, um, oh, one other kind of coffee that's important to note, and that's a coffee correcto. And a coffee correcto is a coffee that's been corrected. <laughs> the way it's been corrected is a little bit of some sort of uh, liquor has been added to it. Often uh, grappa, the national beverage, I guess, the national liquor of Italy, uh, perhaps a scotch. Every, uh, every coffee bar seems to have a bottle of Lefroig uh, on its, um, on its, uh, on its, in its, in its uh, liquor bar, in its, in its liquor uh, shelf. Um, and uh, it could be a, a little bit of cognac, or it could be some Irish cream. There's, there's uh, depending on the bar, there's at least five or six different kinds of liquor available. So if you like to have a little bit of liquor with your coffee, and that's certainly um, uh, possible. And and the uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of uh, of, uh, of laws and special taxes uh, for the serving of liquor in bars. Uh, it's just you know it's just part of the deal. Um, now there's no such thing as drip coffee in Italy. Uh, you don't see bun coffee machines, you don't see uh, Mr. Coffees, you don't see coffee filters in the grocery stores. They don't exist. Uh, they're just not used here. Uh, instead, um, if you want something similar to what we would think of as a drip coffee in the United States, uh, for example, you can order what's called a cafe americano. And a cafe americano is a beverage that is um, it's a, um, it's like a kind of a weekend espresso. So they take what would be a normal size coffee cup in, in the United States and they put a shot of espresso in it and then they fill it up the rest of the way with, uh, with hot water out of the, out of the uh, espresso machine. And um, so you have a, a very diluted espresso and just like apparently Americans, <laughs> most Americans like to drink. It's not my favorite drink but, uh, and I don't normally order one, but uh, I do see a lot of uh, American tourists ordering Americano because uh, they are intimidated by the rest of the coffee culture and are not sure what they're going to get. Now there are literally, you know, dozens and dozens of different uh, coffee drinks available in, in coffee bars. Uh, and it depends, of course, on, on which bar you go to. Some bars have really elaborate drinks. Uh, some have really, really fancy ones with layers and different, you know, maybe some whipped cream and some a layer of froth milk and a layer of, uh, of coffee and syrup. Who knows? It's just all kinds of different, uh, different coffee drinks. But there are some... Um, some common ones that I wanted to uh, to mention to you, and the first one is a cappuccino, and a cappuccino is a coffee, a shot of espresso, uh, in a medium-sized cup. The rest of the cup is filled up with um, with uh, steamed milk. I would say probably one third coffee, two thirds steamed milk. Uh, it is similar to what a cappuccino is in the United States, but there is a rule about cappuccinos and uh, cappuccini, and in in Italy there are many uh, food rules. It's, it's a place where uh, tradition is taken seriously and, um, and people tend to follow these rules and you know uh, people are nice here and if you break a food rule <laughs> you're not going to go to food prison but maybe the, uh, the staff in the, in the bar or the restaurant might kind of you know raise their eyebrows or look at each other with kind of a questioning look on their face. Um, 
But one of the rules is that a cappuccino is a breakfast beverage, and so you don't order it after 10 or 11. And, and you know, some bars may not even serve it to you. Most will, it depends on where you are. But uh, it's a breakfast beverage because milk is something you have for breakfast, not something you have all day long. Um, there are a bunch of other food rules, and uh, hopefully we'll cover some of those in future videos. And this is going to be a long one. I appreciate uh, that it takes time to uh, to listen to the rantings of an old guy for this long. Um, the second uh, kind of special coffee that's really common is a macchiato. And a macchiato is also a, a coffee with milk, but just a tiny little bit. It's a mark. It's marked with milk. Uh, and so you get a shot of espresso in a standard espresso cup normally and uh, they put just a tiny little bit of milk foam on the top of it, just a, just a touch to decorate it. And uh, that, of course, is acceptable any time of the day or night. Uh, you can order a macchiato after a meal in the evening and no one will, no one will think differently of you. Uh, now, Americans are also used to a beverage uh, in coffee bars called a latte. And uh, in Italian, latte, latte, uh, is translated into milk. So if you go to a bar and you order a latte, they'll ask you if you want it, uh, uh, you know, cold or hot. And, uh, and that may be confusing, uh, but you'd say, you tell them you want it hot, for example, uh, caldo per favore, and they will bring you a, a glass of steamed milk <laughs> without any coffee. It's, you know, because, and they'll wonder why you're having it. But, uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's a um, it's a different thing. Uh, uh, latte as, a, as an espresso drink normally doesn't exist in this country. Although I have seen in some coffee bars uh, something uh, called a, a coffee latte, which um, is um, you know a little a shot of espresso in the bottom of a glass with some hot milk on top, um, similar to a cappuccino but without all the uh, the bubbles and. Um, and you know it's not it's not weird sometimes you're served a, a cup of uh, hot milk with a little pitcher of espresso on the side for you to pour in on your own and uh, and uh, and fill up there's also uh, some other variants um, that are pretty common in coffee bars one of them is uh, ginseng coffee and ginseng is pretty much available in almost every coffee bar here and uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with ginseng it's a uh, a root from from asia that has uh, various medicinal properties attributed to it and the um, the in coffee bars uh, people think that having a coffee with ginseng increases your mental energy so the coffee increases your physical energy and the ginseng increases uh, what goes on in your brain case also uh, chocolate chocolate you can get uh, chocolate uh, added to your coffee um, and there are several different uh, espresso drinks different coffee drinks that uh, include chocolate um, if you don't uh, want coffee but you want a hot beverage that's similar you can order a cafe de orso which is basically barley coffee roasted barley ground into a coffee and uh, some people really like that not my thing but uh, some people like it then in the summer uh, a common drink especially among the young folks is a, a shakarato and a shakarato is putting uh, some coffee uh, some espresso into a cocktail shaker adding some ice a whole other food rule about ice we'll talk about another time but uh, and then it shook it's uh, it shook up to a frothy beverage uh, sometimes with some milk sometimes without sometimes with some simple syrup sometimes without and it's strained and poured into a glass of uh, kind of cold uh, cold delicious uh, coffiness and um, and really nice on a hot summer day um, cafes uh, bars also have pastries and they have a pastry counter normally a pastry case uh, and um, when you go in the pastries are sometimes really elaborate uh, sometimes uh, more simple um, some uh, some uh, cafes bake their own uh, delicious pastries I'm looking at you Imperio uh, but many uh, many get their uh, their uh, pastries from one of a couple of of large commercial uh, bakeries here in the city in Bologna and uh, and in fact I if I'm ever up early enough in the morning <laughs> I want to try to track one down by the smell because I heard that if you're up at you know four in the morning and wandering around the city you can follow your nose and find these bakeries um, but in both cases the pastries are delicious uh, the uh, pastries um, 
have different names. Uh, there's a Italian version of the croissant called a, a cornetto, which is a little more bready, a little less buttery, and uh, quite delicious. It can be served plain. It might be a multi-grain version. It could be uh, it could be stuffed with something with chocolate, with uh, with pastry cream, con crema. Uh, it could be uh, it could have some sort of uh, a fruit um, uh, marmalade or something like that. Uh, my particular favorite is a brioche, which uh, is different than what the French uh, think of as a brioche. A brioche here is a, a pastry might be sort of like what we might call a Danish pastry in uh, in the States, but uh, but quite a bit uh, less sweet. Uh, and I don't, I'm not a big fan of sweet. Uh, but I have one that uh, my favorite in the coffee bars, if they have it, is uh, one that has three little slices of apple on top on a piece of basically puff pastry and uh, a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of apple jam on top and uh, and then baked and it's it's really 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 good um, now how you order in a in a, in a uh, cafe is important too um, in some uh, really large and busy cafes and large and busy bars there is a cash counter uh, as you come into the bar if you look around you might see a, a, a colleague sitting uh, at a little counter off to the side maybe a little uh, a little desk or something uh, and uh, with the cash register and in those sorts of uh, bars those busy bars you go first to the to the cash register to the kasha and you uh, you tell the uh, the colleague what you want and uh, you say I want a you know cafe um, uh, I want a cappuccino and a brioche for example and so they'll write up the uh, the ticket for you and uh, you pay them and take the ticket to the counter and then the uh, the barista, the bar woman, or the barman will uh, will go ahead and uh, and uh, and complete your order. Um, in most cases, though, especially in you know in smaller coffee bars, what you do is you go to the counter and you place your order. The uh, you, the order is is pulled and, and served to you, and uh, you consume it at the counter. Or in some cases, there might be some tables in the cafe uh, if you're having a a cappuccino it takes longer to drink so maybe you sit down with it and read the paper or check your email or whatever while you eat your brioche and drink your coffee and uh, then when you're done you go back up to the, the counter where the cash register is uh, on the coffee counter and uh, remind the uh, remind the barman what you what you had to uh, what you had to eat and drink and uh, they will go ahead and uh, and go ahead and cash you out and tell you what you owe um, Let's see. Um, finally, I want to say something about uh, coffee machines <laughs> because they're they're around too, and uh, you know, coffee machines in Italy are pretty cool. Uh, they uh, they're in public places like uh, like trans transit terminals, uh, in uh, uh, train stations on the tracks, and uh, sometimes on bus stations, uh, in uh, university college buildings, and some office buildings that are too small to have their own cafe. Um, and they're amazing machines. Um, now I'll, I'll have some photos of them on my Instagram feed shortly. But uh, when you order a cup, the machine actually has a reservoir of coffee beans. Uh, it, it grinds the coffee beans. It presses them into a uh, into an extruder. It uh, extrudes the coffee into a cup. It uh, drops a little spoon into the cup, and it uh, takes it over and, and dispenses it to you. And of course, it has all the options. If you want a cappuccino or a macchiato or with ginseng or with chocolate or whatever, you can get it there. Uh, finally, um, oh, oh, one other kind of coffee that I didn't mention, and that is decaffeinated. It does exist in Italy for those who have to drink decaffeinated coffee. It's normally referred to as AG, spelled H-A-G, uh, AG, and uh, it's um, it's just the brand name of decaffeinated coffee here, and so most uh, coffee bars will have it, and even some of the coffee machines. I have some coffee photos on my Instagram feed already. I'll post more. Hope you stay tuned. The next uh, Bologna tip, the next update will uh, be about the markets, and then I have one uh, I'm working on right now about public transportation. Hope you have a good day wherever you are. I'm sorry this was so long. I hope that YouTube allows me to post it. And, uh, and have a great day. Ciao.